and also reduce your water. This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. Our temperatures once again rose above the triple digit mark and we are seeing some powerful thunderstorms develop because of all that heat. Mm. Coverage of this heat wave tops Channel 2 News at 530. Our previous record for this day was 102 degrees. I'm not exactly sure if we reached it or not. Mm -hmm. Good evening. I'm Landon Miller. I'm Kristen Revington. Thanks for keeping it here. We're about to find out. Meteorologist <laughs> Angela Schilling is in for Mike tonight. Did we hit that number, Angela? We did. We made it up to 102. So, so far we have tied the record for today and we'll probably get an official report around six o'clock. But in the meantime, it's not only the heat. We also have a flash flood warning in place and it is for Mono County and it goes through 8 p.m. And unfortunately it is around the Marina burn scar. So with the flash flooding, we could also see some debris flows too. Again, it goes through 8 p.m. And the showers and thunderstorms that are developing are very slow moving and that's why we could see the flash flooding potential. However, we don't have a ton of moisture to work with. Zoom out. You can see that majority of the activity is south of Tahoe, but there is a little bit of some rain. If I zoom in a little bit, uh, you can see that in between Truckee and Reno, there is a little cell that popped up, but overall we do have a lot of dry air to overcome. It's just those isolated areas like Mono County uh, where they are seeing uh, some flash flooding again uh, near that Marina burn scar. As far as temperatures, we certainly are hot 101 degrees in Reno, 104 in Fallon, 105 in Lovelock, 89 in South Lake. Again, so far the high for today is 102 degrees. Now tomorrow we do have a better chance for seeing showers and thunderstorms and with the thunderstorms we could see dry lightning and that's why we do have red flag warning in place for your Friday and it goes through 9 p.m. That heat advisory that goes through tomorrow at 11 p.m. So tomorrow looks to be a little bit more active than today and plenty heat, plenty of heat to go around. I'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Angela, thank you. And whenever the mercury soars into the triple digits, please turn to Channel 2 News on our app online on Facebook and Twitter for continuing coverage of our heat wave. Sparks police are asking for your help finding a girl who ran away from home last night. 14 year old Mayaya Avalinas was reported missing around 9 p.m. She is five feet tall, has a thin build and shoulder length, dark colored hair with dark colored tips. Now she was last seen wearing a white shirt, gray sweatpants and low top shoes. Police say she also has some mental health issues. She was last seen near her home in the 5100 block of Canyon Run Parkway. So if you've seen her, please contact the Sparks Police Dispatch at 353-2231. If you are just joining us tonight, let's catch you up on the big story we covered at five. We're working to learn more about a deadly officer involved shooting. It happened in Sparks. Police say Sparks officers responded to a report of someone driving erratically on the wrong side of the road and hitting cars in the area of 4th Street and Greenbrae Drive. Officer tried to conduct a traffic stop in the area of First and Richards Way, and police say they ended up fatally shooting the driver. Despite efforts to perform CPR on scene, they say the suspect passed away. Police are still looking for anyone who witnessed the suspect driving erratically before the shooting. If you can help, if you have information, you're encouraged to call Reno Police or Secret Witness. 322-4900 or text your tip to 847-411. Turning to Money Watch now, first impressions are everything, especially when you're selling your home. Kai Sisson shows us how making simple adjustments to the decor of a for sale property can make a home sell not only faster, but for more money. This living room inside a beautiful new home for sale in Southwest Reno was a blank canvas with nothing but the busy echo of looky loos. But now it looks like this. A professional home stager came in, put in all the furniture and accent pieces. Now this is a proven concept to get buyers and sellers into their next home faster. I like to really make it feel really warm and welcoming. Um, I want that wow factor when people walk in. Chase Porsau is the owner of Chase and Design Home Staging and goes into both vacant and occupied for sale properties to give homes a modern, organized look. 
This helps make potential buyers envision what the home could look like if it were their own. It's a lot easier to see negatives than it is positive, so I try to get rid of all those negatives. Making simple adjustments to avoid any negative reaction from potential buyers include moving things away from the windows, storing away any personal knickknacks, family photos, and political statements. This helps keep the home neutral and is what buyers want to see. And for those who are selling an occupied house, professionals can stage your own belongings since killing your clutter is key. When people look at a house, you really want to make sure that it's not cluttered, it's very clean, it's very tidy. The cost to stage varies, but the median price is $675, a worthy investment, according to realtors who say staged homes sell for more and faster. Sellers want to spend less time on the market. Typically, when they're ready to sell, they want it to go way more quickly. Covering Money Watch, Kai Sisson, Channel 2 News. All right, if you looked up into the sky at about 945 last night, you may have gotten quite a show as a fireball passed through the atmosphere. While some thought it was a comet or a meteor, experts have confirmed it was debris from a Chinese rocket. Paul Nelson joins us here in the studio after talking to the director of the Fleischmann Planetarium. Paul, why does he say this was space junk? Well, part of it is how fast it traveled, Chris, and people in the western U.S. likely could watch the fireball for a couple of minutes. A meteor only lasts a few seconds. The rocket was launched June 25th, and the debris finally showed up last night. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> Reno's southeastern sky lit up last night, giving people from California to Utah a free fireworks show courtesy of China's space program. It's cool, it looks cool, and it also, I guess, can be, uh, can be scary, but, uh, but it, was, it was safe and just a fantastic sight. Dan Ruby says the fireball was probably traveling at about 20,000 miles per hour, much slower than a meteor that can go more than 100,000 miles an hour. And while it may have seemed close, it was actually about five or 10 miles above the Earth. But that's still pretty high up, and you can see that for hundreds and hundreds of miles. So everybody swears they saw it land just over the next mountain range, and it didn't. It was visible for, for many, many, many miles. Ruby says it's very unlikely any of the debris reached the Earth before it burned up, which is typical after a rocket is launched. Pieces start to separate as it heads into space. The first stages fall into the ocean, or in Russia's case, in the middle of nowhere. The upper stages make it almost to orbit, so they can go around the Earth a while before they kind of tumble back to Earth. Ruby says the equipment burns and breaks into tens of thousands of pieces, made out of things like aluminum and titanium, like this piece of engine from a space shuttle. These are the kind of things that we would expect to see from space junk. This is titanium, so it, it wouldn't burn up as quickly as other parts of the rocket. Next time you see something like this moving through the sky, there's an easy way to tell the difference between space junk and a space rock. If something streaks across the sky in a few seconds, it's probably a meteor. And Ruby says we're also in the middle of a meteor shower, so you can probably spot a, quite a few shooting stars at night. Now, the greatest meteor shower of the year is expected to happen August 12th. Covering the story live in the studio, Paul Nelson, Channel 2 News.